and what the max amperage drawn or the watts the wattage that's eaten up do we know any of that yeah we do so okay. each of the lights we have on the vehicle the the modern lights are 10,000 lumens which if that was an incandescent bulb uh, would be roughly and I say roughly equivalent to 100 watts which uh, nowadays with an LED bulb is uh, I don't know 15 watts or something like that. I say 10. And so like if you uh, replace your old 60 watt bulbs at home with an LED bulb the it's not You're drawing using anywhere like a near 7.5. Yeah, it's like 7 watts. So watts and lumens don't really, there's not a, a watt doesn't necessarily equal a certain amount of lumens. That's, a, That's why it was a rough conversion there. That's a measure that you look at when you're buying lights is how many lumens are you getting per watt. Exactly. There is a, and there's a number for that, uh, the lumen per watt thing or conversion, but I think a modern uh, automobile light is somewhere closer to uh, 1,500 lumens or 1,200 lumens. But If you turn on our ROV lights at night and you happen to be looking at the ROV lights, you won't be able to see anything but spots for oh, five minutes. Quite the deer in headlights. This is after rigorous scientific experimentation that we came to that <laughs> conclusion. <laughs> so who did you choose to be the guinea pig? <laughs> Intern. <laughs> It's part of our intern hazing ritual. Here, stand here and look at that. We have them stand there and we calibrate the sonar so they have to get uh, irradiated. Put on a <laughs> oil hat. There's a fish on the have a <laughs> cable. Pie tin in each hand. And we make them dance in and front of the it. ROV until they finally realize wait a minute, it's a sonar. <laughs> Did you say that was a rat tail? I think so. What it looks awesome. like to me. I used to try to get them to do that for people who hadn't done an XBT launch on this boat, but oh yeah, you know, like I line totally up, have one person like holding their shoulders, you know, yeah, ready for the kickback. Oh. They got me really shoulder good. launch. Yeah. I had the uh, had my safety glasses on and a blaster visor and life vest and. We had, a, we had a welding mask at one one boat, and we would mm -hmm. give them the welding mask. <laughs> but I have seen it go overboard. I've seen somebody in, like, flippers. I guess not overboard, wrong term. Over Over the top. I was going to say overboard oh. is quite a different beast. Just for excess. Interesting thing with our lights now, we're, since we're going uphill, we can see a lot farther than we used to. Than we can if it's level or if it's going downhill. Cause the, re the, the light reflects back, obviously, uh, better off of the wall than it does the floor. So we always like to go uphill or we really like to look at clips. To yeah, going backwards downhill is not so much fun. No. Just like real life. <laughs> That's exactly what we're going to do now. <laughs> <laughs> But we do have cameras on uh, both sides of the vehicle and looking. There's one uh, looking out the back.
So Nico, what are these uh, shapes? Uh, or the, what's causing this wall? Is this like a fissure in the ground that's pulled lava up, or do we know it? Oh, you are asking the engineer. <laughs> uh, I'm not sure what would cause these. That's quite a wall there. It is. I was noticing that as well. Okay, back to the light question. Do colored lights penetrate the murky water differently? Kind of like using yellow-orange lights penetrates mist better because it scatters less than blue does. Obviously, red, red light isn't good in the ocean. Red light tends to drop dead. Yeah. Part of the reason we use green lasers, uh, they penetrate uh, through the seawater better than we used to use red lasers because that's, that's all, all we, we could get, get. <laughs> <laughs> i forget the exact uh color of these lights i want to say they're around 6500 would our lights overheat out of water are they specially made for in water yes they are yeah we can't run them on deck for more than uh probably a minute or so and then they're too hot to actually touch and they will spontaneously combust if they're left on too long. But the latest uh, generation of deep sea power and light stuff will automatically uh, start shut down if they overheat. Hmm. Yeah, they are clever now. That is nice of them. Back in the day that was a, a <laughs> definitely a rookie move come on deck with lights on and uh, some of the old lights had plastic nacelles that were burst into flames. <clears throat> One of those make work days. <laughs> <laughs> it's just a gift to the shift coming on after you. <laughs> yeah, really. Yeah. Oh, by the way. Yeah, I mean, the LEDs are way less power draw and less uh, more reliable than the old incandescents. Yeah, it's tragic. Uh, so some vehicles are using uh, all the smart stuff that DSPL has and uh, the lights are powered by DC and then they also have telemetry so they can dim the lights mm -hmm. and um, some of the fancier ones are now kind of like the ones you see on off-road vehicles where they have floods and spots in the same light so they can uh, turn on and off different LEDs in the array. Yeah, we've done some work with some of the dimmable ones but for the most part for what we're doing like a dimmable one just isn't needed. Um, yeah, we always want more light. We can't have enough. You can get into a bit of a silly game with the auto iris camera and the dimmable lights. You turn the <laughs> lights down and the, the iris dilates and you turn them down some more and the iris dilates and you end up with the same picture except it gets grainier and grainier. Yeah, Tammy could probably tell you something about how Far the iris is open now, but that's probably significantly more open than we usually run. Hey, yeah, it's almost—it's just about all the way open. It looks like this cable is covered with lots of little brittle stars. Those. It's nice we provide them so many areas where they can get up into the water current a little bit. Those are some neat formations. Yeah, little towers. 
Oh, you can see the like the layers of the lava flow. Zoom in just a bit there, Tammy. Yeah, perfect. Thank you. There'd be a little city there. There's the amphitheater and the uh, condo on the left. <laughs> yeah. You got some more leash. What's that? You got more leash. Yeah, I do. Finally. Time to play around. So we have to go to the top of this thing, attach the float, and then go back to the bottom and release. All right, dude. So we have a comment saying they imagine we use half the power and get twice the light so you don't pulse with modulated ones. The problem with the uh, PW, I mean the lights, is um, our camera will pick that up. And if we're doing uh, digital stills or the video, it becomes apparent. Uh, they did do a form of pulse width modulation on the strobes when we have uh, strobe lights hooked up to a digital still camera. And then in that case, they're actually overdriving the strobes for a heartbeat, but sometimes the strobes will come on uh, kind of like when you press the shutter on your camera and it flashes a little light to get the camera adjusted. Okay, and is the ROV... But if we did dim them, uh, that would be how they were dimmed with full okay. switch modulation. Is the ROV DC power or AC? Both. Well, the overall ROV is AC powered, but then uh, on board we convert and Ooh, so the lights, cave there yeah so the lights are running at at like 120 110 volt same thing you'd get if you plug something in your kitchen oh with a pedestal or uh this is fascinating um but then we also have uh, a lot of dc powered instruments on the vehicle That is a large Brzingid. Brzingid? A what? Brzingid? Is that the animal you're... Yeah. Is that one of the sea stars? Or is that a feather star? It's a, a star. <laughs> Definitely a kinoderm. <laughs> You're correct, Brzingid Sea Star. It's beautiful. Yeah, over the years you pick some things up. <laughs> Easy for you to say. Yeah, uh, Greg's probably the most experienced scientist in the room at the moment. <laughs> <laughs> You know, a pilot who got was awarded a PhD in sampleology. <laughs> <laughs> they uh, there was a what they thought was a sulfur pool, and they wanted to get a sample, and they were trying to figure out how to do it. And 
he took like an old one of those big tomato cans from the galley emptied and hose clamped it to a broomstick and just dunked it in really <laughs> yeah. sweet yeah, and got a, a sulfur cast of the inside of the can Did you see Sebastian after it dipped itself in the, one of the early dives? They, they dipped, dipped it themselves. in some kind of blue or green slime stuff, and it stuck oh, all God. over the ROV. We had a pilot try to oh, contact. dunk. Contact. Sorry. Try to dunk the, uh, the whole vehicle into a uh, brine pool. Yeah, uh, maybe that's what it was. And uh, you can't do it. Because of the buoyancy? Yeah, they couldn't. We got up to like the uh, just over the main HD, which was kind of neat to see as <laughs> like. But. But it also could have been like the depth of the brine pool. It was really hard to tell because of the. Uh, it seemed like there were layers of different brine in the pool. Okay. And uh, we had a reel on the front. We were lowering in a uh, pumped sampler to then pump brine up and through a sampling process on the vehicle. But we think there wasn't enough weight on it and that it, at some point, it was just coiling between the two layers. Wow. Just like laying flat. Yeah, that was that was a Gulf of Mexico at the but hot tub of despair. We have our viewers saying this lot these lava formations are really cool and they are they're really absolutely. Cool. What I don't like about geologists is they'll be like, "We're gonna go look at fresh lava," so I'm all excited because like fresh lava that sounds it's gonna be like really fun to go look at. And they're like, "Yeah, it's super fresh. It's only like ten thousand years old." <laughs> <laughs> Excitement comes down a little bit. <laughs> yeah. So when, like when Bob Meldrum used to say, recently. Yeah. <laughs> what do you mean, Bob? I mean, 10,000 years ago. Ah. Uh. <clears throat> Forget which science ROV it was. They, uh, they took a titanium hook and actually hooked into and got a sample of lava underwater. I guess wow. it was magma at the moment but brought it up i'm guessing they didn't use regular plastic no it was a titanium <laughs> hook okay yeah so this looks to me like a lot of sheet flows yeah ship has pretty much arrived on site Oh god, I am way behind the ship. I might have moved us a little close. Yeah, zoom out just a little bit. You are going to, uh, what's that? Is it zoom out a little bit on our VNAV? On this guy? Yeah. There we go. There's <laughs> there you got you are going to go. stop him, uh, stop him short of the mine, right? So we don't... Yeah. Bridge now. Swing into it. Looks like the ship's almost past the morning. Please or offset one or the other. Step and hold position. Oh, yeah. Where is the mooring based on the offset we've been seeing? Hmm. You can uh, maybe move her 50 meters back towards us. Roger that. Got a rock next to you. Yeah. <sighs> Giant rock.
Greg, you were talking about the brine pools early, how, earlier. How common are they? That's an excellent question. <laughs> I know they're more common in the Gulf of Mexico than they are here. It's actually kind of an interesting read. There's uh, the Gulf of Mexico is uh, like a salt dome underneath the seafloor. Uh -huh. So it makes some interesting features. Yeah, uh, I can uh, come up a bit if you want. There, Greg. Do we have any idea how old these rocks are? Like when this was last volcanically active? Uh, quite recently. <laughs> Geologist <laughs> recently? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, geologists are all over with their descriptors. You get like uh, hard rocks versus soft rocks. Uh huh. Then you have fluffy rocks and like anything that has a descriptor of fluffy, I feel, is something that could be thrown at your face and you'd be okay with it. You know? <laughs> fluffy rock, not so much. Fluffy rock, not so much. What are these white circular things on the rock? I remember reading somewhere that Hawaiians have like a dozen different names for lava, like the uh, Inuit in the north have dozen different names for snow. Okay, thanks. Is this better? This, the, I mean, there are a lot of different... Like, I understand the use of the descriptors for geology, but I just don't agree with them. It is it is kind of neat to take a, uh, a rock sample, though, and be flying up and, and watch it just kind of float <laughs> off the basket. Just, like, float away. Rena Tunnicliffe used to say, some of my best friends are geologists, but I wouldn't let my daughter marry one. <laughs> Do you have something against geologists, or was it this particular person? She was a biologist. Uh, it's a quote. <laughs> So these little white spots we were just talking about it they look kind of like sponges is it Can we look closely at one as you're going by at some Are point? Are they these sponges? The these sponges little... that we were looking for yesterday? They're just little white dots that we're looking at. Look like little white dots. <laughs> I'm pretty sure they're sponges. Yeah, I know at some point yesterday we were looking for sponges that were described as little white dots. Yes, um, Shore believes, they confirm that they believe these are demo sponges. And it doesn't go by any other name. Demo and sponges are under there. the ones that we use in our household. Just like scooting well, through. touching the cable. What's that? The demo spongier are the ones that we use in our household. Mm. Actually pretty Is that a brand? Brand of sponges? No, it's a... Uh, uh, a class. What's that, Kim? Pretty much. Demo spongier is a class of sponges. Household sponges now are synthetic. Not always. Uh, um, do a nice slow zoom in there if you want, Tammy. You what do you mean, houses? <laughs> They're the sponges you use when you buy a natural sponge. Oh. We have a joke in support of geologists here. Uh, Damien from Shore says, if I had a daughter, I would let her marry a geologist because they rock. Uh -huh. <laughs> You can always count on Damien for the jokes. I was just going to say that's this such a, a Damien joke. <laughs> um, there are some people who swear by the the natural sponges that are from these animals. 
because apparently they don't mold the way they're they're built. I'm afraid we have to keep moving if possible here. Okay. We're, we're waiting on Tether. Okay. Yep. Thank you for the close-up of them. No problem. The thing about natural sponges that uh, rubs me the wrong way <laughs> is um, they used to be living creatures on the seafloor, and I think if you can use synthetic sponges, why don't you do that? So someone online is comparing them to okay, a loofah, me... but the loofah is a plant uh, that's kind of like a cucumber or a squash. But if you let it dry out, it makes the loofah Yeah, now funginess. loofahs are a plant, but at one point it was a sponge harvest. Yeah, well, we still do harvest sponges. Uh, there yeah. are still places. Um, I live near Tarpon Springs, so we have the sponge docks. <laughs> It's interesting that these sponges are all so small. And you get 20 minutes to get there and fly up this thing and fly back down. I think we should be looking for it. Uh -huh. I don't have anything in sonars. So the ship has stopped. Argus has caught up. Yep. Well, we should probably call in a... Yeah, we're going to have to call move. in a move. Yeah, keep following the cable. All right. Let's do uh, 20 meters. Actually, let's do 50. <laughs> Just to put her right back where she was before I moved. Yeah, her sorry. Time. Better okay. safe than sorry. Um, we had to wait for, now that Argus is here, I'm not so worried about it. But if we would have ran over it before and then swung Argus into the morning, it would have been. It might have been a bad thing. It would have been a bad thing. I think it's right there at the bottom of the cliff, but I can't quite see it yet. Isn't it, Nico, right on the edge of the cliff, isn't it? Uh, I think so, but best to just follow the cable in case we get turned around yeah. and spend We're about 20, 20 meters like from the cliff, so we stopped up short um, to let Argus swing in so we didn't sweep it into the morning. In our nav, we have the offset with our nav, so I don't... Bridge, nav. Mm. Our, uh, it's highly repeatable, but not necessarily accurate. So that should put Argus where I am now. Just Which a little past, will be I think. 25 meters away from the cliff. Roger. Thinking I should go uh, update the board, push things by 30 minutes. Yeah, we'll probably be set up to work on it by the top of the hour. Yeah. And still needing 15 minutes at least there to. Yep. All right. I'll go change the board quickly. Just so people are aware. So we have someone. We start the transit that we get. Um, around the gauge check. Then I got bored, so I made one that said we were on route to the morning. We started at the gauge check. All right. We have someone online who's from Clearwater and saying and giving also a shout out to Tarpon Springs, since you mentioned it, Greg. Yeah, I haven't been there in like two years. Wonder why.
So what were you saying about dropping the other weight? No, I said it's up to you as to how heavy or light you feel you are. Yeah, once. I think we're coming up about 10 now. From what I saw. Probably ditch it on the ascent. Uh. Yeah, if I can come up and range this thing out on the sonar, probably not. It's just a wire. Isn't it one of those four wire ones? Yeah. How far are we allegedly from the. How many meters? 65? It depends on what the offset is and everything. Are you guys not following the cable? Uh, we're waiting for the ship move, and while that's happening, I'm going to come up and see if I can spot it on sonar. You disappeared long enough for them to have some fun. <laughs> no fun. <laughs> no fun. <laughs> now we have a schedule. That might be it there in uh, Argus sonar. We know it's at the end of the cable, but. We're just trying to figure out how much farther away we are. It's that the ship moves that take forever, and you call it on us. Two, three, four. So that would be 85 meters from Argus. If that's it, once yep. it looks like it. Uh, there's a hit on her. I don't know if that was noise. I would say that's it. Yeah, if you bring Argus's head to the left a little, see if it comes Oops. back. Just to mess with you, I went to the right. What's that? I went to the right. Uh, yeah, if you put Argus's head on the same as Herc. It's still there. Come left on your head a little. Coming. Tether tug. Roger. Yeah, that's it. So it's 80 meters. If you're pretty confident with the sonar hit, we can skip in that direction. It's pretty well in line with the cable. Yeah. Yeah, we just put in a 50 meter ship move, Nico, which once Argus swings in, that should get us there. Perfect. Should be all good. Just waiting on Argus. All right. We'll want to land the morning in pretty much the same spot, so we want to pull the cable back along the way it came anyway. So may as well follow the cable. Yeah, I'll follow the cable into the base of it. Just, I was more worried about it's taller than Argus is, right? Oh, yes. By a good... 200, 200 meters. meters. Yeah. Uh, you can, uh, if you want, you can drop Argus right down on the deck there, Greg. So 
So we have a viewer who who has who missed our vent footage from yesterday in the last couple of days. Are we going back to the vents? It was quite. Do even. we know when? Yes, we are going back to the vents. Um, we're gonna lay a uh, new cable from our Endeavor node back to that main Endeavor site that has the vents everybody likes, and that should be starting. You have some good venting. It's cable lay probably starting okay. tomorrow. Um, Maybe at the site the day that yeah, but I'm night seeing past or something it, so like that. It's hard to hard to estimate you when you're doing tandem ship operations. Yeah. So keep watching. We will go back to the vents. But in the meantime, we are enjoying these lava formations and the sponges. And the fish. You have a commenter saying it's weird that there's no corals, but maybe the current is not as nutrient rich here, which doesn't allow the corals to grow as well. Although the sponges there's would also need that current. Distinct chimney. Yeah, watch out for that. Maybe that explains why the sponges are so small, like you were saying, Lori. That is true. It could be that there's, although You're at tether extent. with less food, you'd think there wouldn't be as many, but oh, there's a nice oh, wow. sea star at the top of that one. It's like a the hat. star on a tree. <laughs> Wait, is that a chimney or is that just a? No, I think it's just a column that kind yeah. of broke away from the rest of it. Yeah. With the Brazingid sea star at the top. So it's a echinoderm tree or column. It's a decent sized fish. What's that? Decent sized fish. Oh, there is one down there. Lurking in the dark. Telling us to turn our lights off. That thing's almost a meter. Did anyone notice what kind of fish that was? I couldn't get a good look at it. I did not. It was a rat tail. It was a rat tail? It was not a rat tail. It was tail. not a rat tail. Okay. I didn't say anything until just then. <laughs> Tammy waiting in the shadows just to correct people. <laughs> I'm good with that. Yeah, tether pull. You want me to just come out of auto head? Um... <sighs> Well, one concern I have is that the cable yep. goes past it and then comes back around to it. So, yes. Uh, there. there it is. Like that. So I would say, uh, no, let's not move the ship again. <laughs> <laughs> you want to see the bottom, Nico, or can I head right up to the top? Uh, you can head right up to the top. Okay. Let me get myself unwrapped. From it first. Nope. Well, you can get a nice new hit for us uh, as we uh, get to the top here. Yeah, it was probably some freaking. So, my safe heading is going to be not this heading. We're about 10, 9 meters away. Do you have enough? Uh, am I pulling Argus around, or do you have enough to... You know, Dan, I'm thinking uh, maybe we should connect or disconnect this first and clear the cable, because if we get to the point where uh, we're at sunlight, then we don't really need this recovery float on it at all. And 
Roger. they might say, just go ahead and release without it. So let's clear the connector first. Roger. How far is, uh, I think Argus is still moving there. Yeah, but I just went back into auto heading. I had been spun around. Roger. Or we can leave it tail to tail. I'm happy with that. Yeah, I'm not trying to spin back around. I'm just What's back. That? In, I'm not trying to spin back around. I'm just uh, back in auto heading. Yeah, we might as well go tail to tail, to tail now. We don't need Argus for this. So I'm going to have to, of course, walk around the thing to the unhappy side. So, Lori, Kathy just, from... Sorry. No, uh, Nico, we're just going to disconnect this thing and do what? What's the... So we want to clear the yellow cable uh, right. just like back on itself. Roger. We just want to get it like four, like 30 meters away from this area because we'll land the new one right here. So if you want to give uh, our loggers yellow a cable. good a good position. Is yeah. the orange cable the yellow cable? Yeah, it turns into a... Is it underneath the concrete? Yeah, how did that happen? Wow. Yeah, kind of looks like what? it is. What is that even from? I don't know, but it's on that cable. I bet we can pick it up. I don't know. It looks like a piece of aluminum that's... Yeah, that... That would be a, a coffin box from the yeah. Rockles, so like, it might be a, like a media converter inside. Oh, okay. <coughs> yep. Yeah, um, that's yeah. got stuff in it. Perfect. Yeah. So we'll just disconnect, and then we'll pick up that whole thing and move it out of here. Hey, Tammy. I'm going to turn uh, the mid lights back on. You ready on the iris? Ready. Here we go. And I'm probably going to turn. i got to get a little closer, I think, Greg. Now, yep. did you get a position for our loggers here? I have not yet. This will also be our landing zone as well. We may as well drop it in the same spot. We'll just have to clear the cable out of the way. I was waiting till we got that close. What's that? <laughs> that was not a very elegant landing. You can now uh, go full wide too as well, Tammy. Thanks. You're not already. You're gonna have enough room there. Uh, before I grab and unplug this, we want to plug it into the parking position but we don't have it Fletcher styled, so it Right, might be and we have to hold on to the weight. What parking we position? The one that's hanging on the front of the... The one we got a little bit ago? Yeah, we uh, hung it on the connector. All right, if we're gonna do that, we need to get rid of this freaking uh, Sputnik here. All right, yeah. put it put it down right next to this thing. Roger. There it is in the bubble. Thanks. <clears throat> Thanks so much, Kim. That's good. Welcome. So both Tammy and uh, somebody on shore at uh, ONC have said that that fish was some type of a moorid cod, and the one that's in our book here that Tammy found is the Pacific flatnose. We have someone saying the corrosion is uh, nuts, and they're asking if that's aluminum. 
It is, yeah. You'll have to, uh, if you put it facing straight up with the rope part real close to the jaws, or hopefully both of them in there. And you come left just a little more, and that yeah. way we'll get the rope grabbed real tight to the connector. Something like that. Ready? Uh, hang on, I'm going to try and... Let me bring bubble over. I'm going to try and get both bits of the rope in there. That should do it. Okay, hold on. Okay, again, I'm locked. Open again. Keep opening. I'm gonna open all the way. I'm gonna. Okay, now close. Yeah, go ahead and close there. Closing. And lock. Uh, well, we get it. Can we see where the, oh yeah, we can see where the reference is. Be a tough connection. I don't know if you're gonna. I might have to come up to let you get that off. Does it stand after you attach anything, or is it just sitting there? I can. Uh, it should be attached to the train rail. Right there, Greg, or do you want me to come up? I think I gotta come up. Yeah, to get a good... Yeah, let me come up. I'll give you a better... You move your weapon there, I'll come up and... Use my... Uh, something, something here to park on it. Ollie, we're probably going to run it out until we recover. Unless Greg really wants out. No, I'm okay. That cable is exactly in the way. Hey, if you, you're driving, I'm just an auto heading. Careful, that'll slide out. I'm full lateral right there. Be able to pull it. Of course, you're spinning the whole wheel. You'll have to slack off and then, uh... <laughs> there is a shrimp on there, isn't it? That is not you very happy I mean? with you for that. I didn't hear what you said. <laughs> You'll have to slack off and bring the ROV in front and then give it a tug because yeah. we're floating right now. So you can put some in the bank and then... <clears throat> so I'll take my auto head off till you get it where you want it. You can put the ROV wherever you want because you're driving it. And then before you jerk, say, and I'll, uh, if you want, right. you can bring the ROV up a bit, Greg. So you got a better pull on it. Yeah, I'm coming down. Ready? Watch, right. you're going to slide that connector out. Oh, we're going to have to grab on. I'm going to let go. Roger. You'll have to take your uh, parking position back.
Ready? Yep. Opening. Okay. If you uh, take it away, maybe we can grab on and. Yeah, I'd say just hang it again. I'm going to, uh, while you're playing with that, pull this thing back around. Okay, that's unusual. <coughs> it's just kind of hanging there. <laughs> Pull the arm down and get it. Yeah, get it hooked on and then just pull the arm down, right? And it should. There you go. Something happened. Okay. I've just never had the magnetic parking position. No kidding. Yeah. Uh, I don't know how that got stuck. All right. Is it too high? I can always regrip it afterwards. Bring it up a This one appears to be smoother, less grippable. Been on there for a while. I can walk uh, Herc around if you want, so it's a pull towards you. I don't think it's... I don't think it's a... 
angle thing. Can we get a more uh, front-facing angle on it so you can just be pulling yeah, we, back? Yeah, we can. I'll walk around. Oh. Yeah, excellent. Yeah, great. We'll uh, try to get the parking position in there, and then before we leave here, we're going to want to pull that slide out of the red frame because uh, mooring's going up, but train wheel stays down. Right. Hold on, I gotta walk. I gotta walk back around it. Oh my! All right, there. If you want, I can. Uh, I'm gonna have to let go, anyways. All right. Yeah, you're gonna have to let go. I'm gonna get off it now. I need to stow this someplace. It doesn't end up in the dirt. Might as well set it out there on that aluminum thing, yeah. We're going to need both hands to get the uh, parking position back in. That corrosion on that aluminum box, hmm. there's a titanium junction box inside it and it's in an aluminum if they're, shell. They're, it's probably using the aluminum as a sacrificial anode tie eats aluminum so we're just going to take this off we have a dust cap we don't want to put it on there no that's fine we're recovering it so no dust cap necessary We just want to make sure it's not going to get caught on anything when we uh, release it. Oh, okay. Yeah. Hang it up at where? Oh, sure. So you can even pick it up and hang it up on the L box that's uh, above us. Okay. Well, we'll get to that once we get this cable capped. Another option, Greg, is to uh, hand that connector to the left arm, and then you try and put the plug in that way, or would you rather do it this way? Uh, I don't know that one's going to save that much over the other. 